Yeah. It's hard to, to stay streamlined, isn't it? You know what I mean? To stay on track, because I feel like, <laughs> oh, what's important here? You know? No, I feel like you did good. You told us enough so that we got the full visual. Without kind of going on and on. Yeah. Hi, I'm Nathan Hughes-Berry. Uh, I'm a British filmmaker and screenwriter, and uh, I teach film production and screenwriting uh, here at Amber College. studying graphics because um, when I left high school it was a choice of um, business or graphics <laughs> um, and I wanted to pick kind of a more creative option um, so I went with that. I didn't have a particular kind of passion for graphic design or know much about it um, and kind of as the course kind of got got moving I kind of became aware very quickly that it, it wasn't something that I was kind of very adept at. Um, so I kind of was struggling and kind of failing in the second year um, and figured out that for a final project I was actually allowed to do film work um, so I kind of started to put together these little kind of ideas like just kind of observational documentary stuff um, with voiceover um, super simple I, I didn't know anything about cameras or editing or anything so I just kind of started from scratch figuring it out myself um, and it was the first time when I presented those that I'd actually seen kind of good feedback from my professors, you know, like, I actually, I actually, I remember leaving, like, the feedback session feeling kind of, like, almost high, <laughs> like, oh my god, they actually liked something I did, um, so that kind of led me, um, kind of down that path towards film, um, and those films actually won an award, um, and I kind of met some people within the film industry doing different things, and, um, a woman from the BBC wanted me to kind of pitch some stuff, um, but I, I had no idea kind of how to write a pitch or synopsis or any of that stuff or how to write a formal script. Um, so I decided that I need to go, go and, uh, needed to go and train kind of properly in screenwriting. Um, and so, is that when you got into acting school? Yes, so that I found a course um, at the Drama Centre, which is kind of a prestigious um, acting course at, uh, in London, in England. Um, I, I toyed with kind of auditioning as an actor and I just thought, no, I, I think my kind of self-awareness was like, no, I'm not good enough to do that. I told you to shut up about last night. You don't need to know, all right? I've told you what I do in my own time is my own fucking business. Now, using those experiences, how do you bring them into your teaching and then also your films? I think with the teaching, um, I think because I've had experience as a student and as a filmmaker myself, um, I try and kind of put an emphasis on the practical um, and on just kind of doing things. Um, I think I kind of learned the most from just kind of uh, you know, workshopping stuff and getting stuff on its feet and actually kind of making films. Um, so I kind of try and focus on that with the teaching. Um, and I'm kind of less, I mean, I guess, I guess I'm less formally interested in kind of, you know, lesson planning and structure and grades and all that stuff. Um, so I force myself to kind of have a structure, but I'm just more focused on kind of inspiring people to, to do the work that, that interests them. Um, and I think that kind of came from my experience um, myself. Um, in my film work, I think I'm very much focused on the acting process because I spent a lot of time, you know, with actors and kind of getting some experience acting myself. Um, I see the importance of kind of really working with your actor to kind of get a good performance. And I, I think it's kind of led me to kind of believe that a lot of um, a lot of films are kind of based on how good the acting when it comes down to it. Um, you know, you need an idea, you need a good script, and then you need good actors. Um, so I approach all of my work in that sense. I'm very much kind of connecting with the actors and kind of um, engaged in the process instead of just kind of leaving them and focusing on the technical stuff. You know? I think probably, probably the substitute is the film that was, I think I'm probably more 
like most proud of. Um, I think it was kind of the first film where I really felt like uh, I'd kind of got a good grasp of things. Um, I think before that, I mean, I'd made probably five or six short films before that and just felt um, completely overwhelmed with the process and with the production aspects of it. Um, whereas with The Substitute, I went in with like a very clear idea of what I wanted to do. Um, and I worked my ass off kind of saving money. I worked in a coffee shop in, in Soho in London. So I was working like, you know, 50 hours a week, um, saving money just to kind of put this film together. Um, so it was kind of very satisfying because I felt like we kind of just took an idea um, and kind of got it on its feet kind of entirely just, you know, me and um, at the time um, my wife <laughs> who I was working with um, just kind of took it and kind of created something out of nothing. Um, so yeah, I think that's the film that I'm kind of the most proud of. Now, now you've been in a lot of departments in film such mm -hmm. as screenwriting, directing, acting. Which department excites you the most, or do you have the most joy working in? Um, screenwriting. Screenwriting brings you the most happiness, and, and I think, to be honest, I told a friend this recently who hadn't seen me in a while, I said, look, you know, I'm, I'm quite introverted, and he wouldn't believe it. No, you know, you talk and you do this and that. And, uh, but I think at, at heart, I'm quite an introverted, um, kind of boring old man, you know, I, I like to just kind of drink tea and, you know, watch football and um, sit on my own and think about stuff, so screenwriting very much kind of appeals to that, that part of me that can just kind of take my time and really kind of, you know, get into something, figure out characters and um, just write kind of freely um, without kind of needing to worry, I guess, about practical limitations, um, so I enjoy that process a lot. I think. Directing's very exciting, um, but I find a lot of the kind of social work required to kind of get something on its feet, it can be quite draining. And I, I don't really like the fact that you're very intensely connected to people for a very short period of time and then it dissipates and that's it, you know. I worry about people and I, <laughs> I feel like I want to stay connected and stuff, so. So going back to your time in school, did you ever attend an actual film school? Uh, yes. Uh, um, at, well, at York, at York University, we were doing um, film production. So that was a master's degree, uh, master's degree in film production there. Um, so yeah, that was kind of, that was my experience there. And to be honest, I think, um, I don't know if I learned um, the most useful things there. Um, I think it was kind of an odd experience because we didn't really get into kind of practical stuff. A lot of it was just kind of, well, you know, you're filmmakers and you know what you're doing, so you know, <laughs> we go do it. Um, but I think nice just to have the support as always with film schools, just of like of the professors and just leaning on them for help and you know asking them to read through stuff and um, watch edits of stuff and give their input and suggestions. I think that's where it's kind of. Is we asked you to bring in a souvenir, would you mind yeah. showing us? Yes, yeah, I can show. Um, so it's this, uh, it's this little viewfinder here, um, which I actually use. So um, my ex-wife, um, we actually met at, at the drama centre in London and um, started making films together at that. Um, and we made the substitute together, and she got this for me uh, right before we kind of shot the film. Um, so I kind of used it going around and kind of planning shots and figuring out kind of um, angles and all that kind of stuff. But um, I think although there's a lot of painful history with my ex-wife um, and kind of difficulty, um, I just think every time I see it, it just reminds me that, you know, that someone, you know, in her just like actually kind of believed in me enough to, to, to buy me this and go, yeah, you know, I, you're actually... Um, a filmmaker, you know. Um, so it kind of just reminds me that it makes me feel a bit like, oh yeah, you know, someone, someone really did believe in me at, at that point <laughs> before the divorce. <laughs> now, coming from you as a film teacher, what do you hope to leave your students with? Maybe a lesson or something else? Mm. Yeah, 
that's a good question. Um, I, I think I'd like to leave people feeling a little bit um, a little bit more convinced in their own ability um, and maybe leave them with a greater sense of self-belief. Um, I mean, I think that's kind of my approach, you know, in life. I'd like, you know, everyone that ideally I kind of interact with just to leave feeling better about themselves, not worse. Um, but yeah, I think just, just feeling like, you know, they've got valid ideas and uh, feeling that they've got the ability to, to do whatever it is they want to do. Um, and I think just going back to just kind of wanting to just inspire people and say, look, yeah, you know, you've had this idea, do, you know, let's do it, let's, let's make it, let's, let's, let's create things. Well, thank you for telling your story today. You're welcome. And I think that's all. Thank you. Cool.